Welcome to another episode of Tailored Motor TV. This time I would like to talk about motor designs, the slotted motor versus the slotless motor, which is also sometimes named the coreless or the ironless motor, which in my opinion is not completely correct because we still have iron in the motor, so I will call it the slotless motor. Um, as you know, for every cook I want to make highly scalable motors. That's why I like the, the slotless motor very much. But I'm still looking how, how exactly are the differences, what are the disadvantages of going slotless compared to the slotted motor, because the majority of motors out there is slotted. Some manufacturers offer both and they as, as they are show the advantages but don't talk about disadvantages so it's difficult to make uh, an objective comparison of, of the two motor types. Let me first tell you about the design. The classic slotted motor you have a stator which has teeth or in between the teeth we have the slots that's why we call it the slotted motor and around each tooth we have the coil which is wound and that's how motors have been made for more than a hundred years. In the slotless motor we just have a ring of iron around it and we don't have the teeth and the slot. We have the coil directly inside that ring usually uh, fixed with, with some high temperature epoxy. Um, the advantage from a manufacturing point of view is of course that uh, stamping a round piece of sheet metal is way easier. You just get a standard punch, you just get a standard cutting die for punching. <coughs> and if you want to make different sizes of motor and you organize it neatly, you could even cut the next dimension and the next and the next dimension of motor out of the same piece of sheet metal with nearly zero losses. If we go to the slotted motor we have these stator teeth with a specifically defined geometry and we will need to make a special cutting die to, to cut them and of course we could also go to laser cutting for small quantities but since I want to have a, a segmented stator where you have segments that you then assemble for a whole stator which has the advantage that it's much easier to wind the coil. Um, if we go for a, slotted, a segmented stator we will have for a 60 millimeter motor if we have 0.5 sheet thickness and 12 poles we end up already having 1000 of these small sheet uh, parts so very quickly we end up at the point where it makes sense to go for punching instead of laser cutting but still this part needs to be manufactured specifically for every diameter for every pole count because here also we can change the pole count without having to change anything on the mechanical side. We just wind our coils differently. Of course here it will be a bit more tricky to put the coils in place, to hold them in place before you pour in the epoxy that then sticks them together. But I think I can handle it. Um, what is a clear advantage of the slotless motor is that we, at least in the teeth, don't get a saturated iron. The only place where we could get into saturation is the iron ring outside. But this one is quite easy to, to increase and it's much easier to, to simulate with finite element tools than a whole tooth like this. Another advantage is we have no cogging torque, absolutely no cogging torque. Uh, so we, we have a very smooth operation. Everyone of you who already had a permanent magnet motor in hand knows that it makes kind of click, 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 click when you turn it around. I mean, of course, in the slotted motors 
the right pairing between uh, magnets and slots helps you to reduce that a lot and you can also uh, skid the stator or the coils so they are a bit biased, not straight so that also reduces the, the cogging but if you do that the winding of the coil becomes a little bit more difficult again. One thing I, thing I assume is that you get a higher torque density with the slotted motor because you have the concentration of the magnetic field inside the coil thanks to the iron and so I think we, we can get a, a higher field density close to the magnet which then results in higher torque. Uh, what someone also told me, it's easier to, to estimate where the magnetic field is going because it's uh, precisely guided within that tooth compared to uh, the slotless design where we just know it's somewhere in that coil. Please don't look too much at my drawings, the, it's, it's just a, a rough sketch. We have different colors for the different phases, but as I see now, they don't exactly match, but for this overview, it's, it's okay. Uh, another important point is heat. Uh, most motors die of, of overheating. And if we have the state of teeth, these help us to guide away the heat because iron has a way better heat conductivity than the epoxy. Um, and another point is that we, we can build quite long coils because we have the iron concentrating it. Even the wires out here will have an influence close to the magnet up here. Uh, if, if we go slotless, we make that coil as thin as possible, first due to thermodynamics, because the smaller, the thinner we are, the easier we can take away the heat outside, and uh, it's also easier to build a high field density close to the magnets. So that's the pros and cons I, I was uh, analyzing. I had I watched two interesting videos from Parker. I put the, the links in the comments below where they compare slotless and slotted motors. And they say for small motors they go slotless, but for larger diameters they say that the making a slotted motor is more affordable or cheaper than adding more magnetic material because you have to compensate for that weakening of the field you have because you don't concentrate it, you compensate that by adding more magnet material so, so you get a higher field strength inside the copper coil. And they say at some point it's, it's not useful anymore to go slotless. But that's something I'm, I, I really should be able to, to calculate through to, to exactly know why, why they got to, to that uh, reasoning. A very nice example of a slotless motor, by the way, is the Tango motor. See the link below. There's a German company making that motor. It's for RC helicopters. And they have a even more efficient design. Yeah, because about efficiency, there's also something I wanted to say. Here we have the iron inside the coil, so we switch the magnetic field inside the iron and we of course get uh, losses due to the eddy currents and the switching magnetic field, which are greatly reduced in this design because we don't have iron inside the coil. And the Tango motor goes even one step further. It has uh, magnets in and outside of the coil and has the coil like a cylinder of woven uh, copper wires that are baked together with epoxy. And so both sides are rotating. You have no alterna alternating, alternating, you have no alternating magnetic field 
in the magnetic in the magnets or in the in the iron and therefore they can make very small motors with an efficiency up to 97% which is amazing but their manufacturing process is very tricky since you have to make a perfectly round cylindrical coil and it must remain uh, round with having uh, parts spinning inside and outside uh, at very high speed and if it just starts touching it's over and the motor is dead. So I would go for a motor where the outer ring is stationary, is not rotating and then we can glue all the, the copper windings to that stationary outer ring and the only tricky part will be to have a, a reasonable tolerance inside. Tolerance is, is something uh, where it's written about that it's much easier to have tight tolerances with a slotted motor than with a slotless motor, which of course is obvious. The question is, does that tenth of a millimeter of this, or the, this two tenth of a millimeter have a big influence on, on the final efficiency? Since we gain efficiency because we, we don't have the iron losses or we have less of iron losses. Um, an interesting paper I found on the internet, which I also linked below, compares slotted and slotless motors and on the data sheet they look very similar, um, but it's for a rather small diameter. I'm not sure how well the slotless motor is scalable. What we will try to do within the next month, because it will take some time, is to do a FEM simulation of both and anyway we want to make our FEM simulation scalable and so um, and to, to, to get more detail about this and again I ask to you dear viewers if you can tell me more about the difference between slotless and slotted you're welcome to post comments or to send me feedbacks via any channel. Thank you and bye bye.